<clears throat> Hello musicians, welcome back. My name is Bucky Dirtle and I'm doing another video tutorial on MuseScore 2, the music notation open source application. This is a fantastic piece of software. Um, I've used many uh, versions of notation software over the years since back in the early 90s and uh, I really love this one. It does a lot for us and it's an open source application. So because it's open source, I would advise everybody to uh, go to the developer's website and show your support because they are doing some fantastic work and we need to reward that to them. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, time signatures and I'm going to be talking about uh, clefs. I'm going to start with clefs. Now I have Twinkle Twinkle in here for us to use just as a, uh, just as a um, um, sandbox. Now you notice that we have our treble clef here at the beginning and this is in the key of D major. Uh, but let's say we wanted to play it in bass clef. Um, I can bring a clef into MuseScore is pretty easy. You just grab the clef you want and you bring it over and you drop it into the place where you want it to go. So I just dropped it at the very beginning of the piece and it makes the entire piece into bass clef. Now you're looking at it and you're saying, wait a second Bucky, that doesn't look like bass clef. That, that's all these ledger lines. That looks a bit strange. Well, what uh, inserting a clef does, it just doesn't transpose anything. It doesn't make it into a bass part. What it does is it just interprets it as if you're reading in a bass clef. So this note right here is a D above middle C. And if I go back to my original clef, you can see that's a, it's a D above middle C, same note. It's just that when you, when you bring a bass clef in, it's still a D above middle C. So if you wanted to put this into a bass part, you would need to transpose this down an octave or whatever the note, whatever the range would be. Okay, the interval I'm in. So that, that's our bass clef. I'm gonna undo that to take us back to our treble clef. Now, we have a lot of clefs here. If we want to bring in our octave clef, this shows um, as it would read an octave higher, if you were playing like a piccolo or something, then all of our notes are quite low on the staff. They're low on the ledger lines. Uh, we have other ones too, like if we're playing viola or any instrument that uses uh, like an alto or a tenor clef, we have options for that here as well. And you bring them in and they just, they would automatically move the notes around where they ought to be. You can see that there as well. I'm bringing my, there you go, our bass clef but an octave up, and our bass clef an octave down. It's gonna be a lot of ledger lines. Look at that, holy cow. Um, you know, this is an interesting uh, situation we have here. You'll notice that uh, our ledger lines are up in the ceiling. Now, this is not sensible to have written on a piece of music, but if you did have to write it that way, you could make this fit. This is something we talked about in another tutorial, and this is just a little added bonus for this tutorial. I'm gonna to go to my view and inspector. I'm gonna click on my header right here, and I'm going to write, I'm going to go bottom gap. I'm gonna increase my bottom gap. Look at that. Now it looks like a piece of music. Because, because I increased my bottom gap, it's the gap between the header and the beginning of the music. So it fits. That looks like something that should be there, although it really probably shouldn't because who would want to read something with all those ledger lines? So let's go back to view, go back to inspector, click on our header, and we'll hit reset. And let's go back to a sensible, um, let's go back to a sensible clef, or go back to our treble clef. There we go, we're back to treble clef again, and everything looks normal. Now, let's talk about clefs in the middle of pieces. If I want to switch to bass clef in the middle of a piece, I can just drag a bass clef out and drop it anywhere I want, or any clef for that matter. I can bring in maybe like one of my clefs here, drop it in. Maybe I can bring in like an octave, there you go, drop it in, there you go. So I can have a number of clefs throughout. I just drop them in wherever I want, and the software will automatically move the note visually to a place where it will still represent exactly the same note um, orally or auditorily. So we'll, have, we'll sound like the same note, although it'll look on the screen like it's something out of, out of, out of place. But it is still going to sound exactly the same. If I push play up here on the top, it would sound exactly the same as it was when I had only triple clef. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's the, the clefs. Now, I'm going to delete these guys because in order to delete them, all you got to do is click on the clef and hit your delete key on your keyboard. And that will get rid of the clef for you. There you go. Now we're back to treble clef, back to the way it was in the first place. Now let's look at time signatures. Time signatures, when you get that under our palettes over here, and you can see we have a few. Now, right now we're in 4-4 four, four time. If I want to change this to, say, 2-4 time, 
I bring it my 2-4 time and I drop it right at the beginning and it automatically replaces where the bars should be. And this looks all right. I mean, this looks correct because 2-4 time and 4-4 time are very closely related. Um, no problems with that. I'm going to go back. I'm going to undo. I'm going to go back to 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to drop in 3-4. Now, Twinkle Twinkle is not in 3-4. So in order for it to fit, MuseScore has to do some funky things. Like we have a crossbar tie right here, another one right here to make things right. Here's a little warning for you. If you do switch something to 3-4, switch something to some other odd key, and you go to switch it back, you drop in 4-4 four, four time, look at this, we still have some weird things, look at these ties. Now you might need to fix that. If it turns out that you've done a lot of editing and you you're playing around with some of the, the time signatures, which is very common, you change around some time signatures to try to get some other kind of rhythm feel to a piece of music, and you want to go back, when you drop your time signature back in, MuseScore may keep some of those funky ties and things that you, you don't really want. Now, to go and repair this would might take you a bit of time. It may be heartbreaking to have to repair a whole score just by making a little change like that. Now, if you've only done a couple of steps like I did, I can go undo, and I'll go undo once, undo twice, and I'm back. But if you're 40 or 50 steps into an edit, you can't, you won't be able to go back that far. Undo only goes back so many steps. I'm not sure why that is for music score. Probably 10 or 15 steps back. Now, so what I would advise you to do is, if you're going to do any major edits like that, um, go to File, go to Save As, and make a copy. Make a backup copy of it so that you can revert back to this position if you wanted to. Okay. Now, let me just, um, oh, and you can also drop in time changes anywhere you want in the piece. Drop a 5-4 in there, bar, bar 3, bar 4, 3-8, um, hey, why not? And then throw in 12-8 over here, and we can do like a, I don't know, a cut time here near the end. You can drop in these time changes wherever you want, these uh, time signatures, wherever you like. Uh, you just drag and drop them right in there. It does the trick for you. Now, now let's go to view. And we open up Inspector again. And you'll see me come back to Inspector a lot because Inspector is where we can change every single element within um, our score. So I just clicked on the 5-4 time and you see the elements uh, parameters are over here. I can go horizontal offset and I can move my 5-4 anywhere I want it to be. You may want to move it someplace. I can also move it up and down wherever I want it to be. Depends on what you want. And you can hit reset on the side to make bring it back to the original position. You can do that for any time signature. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but you can also do it for your for your clefts as well. You see, I can move my clefts around wherever I want them to go. You know, I can do what I like with it. There may be a reason for that. I don't know. Now, and one more little uh, note of caution. When you are making changes, like using your horizontal and vertical offset there in the inspector, <clears throat> you might end up making something, making a change that musicians may not recognize. And uh, speaking from personal experience, when we're sight reading something, it's going fast. We sight read through quickly. And we learned, we've learned over the years to just glance at a, a pattern of notes or time signatures, key signatures, and, and know what they are without really getting into it. If you start making changes and putting funny note heads onto your notes or moving your time signature or your key signature somewhere strange, not normal, it might be harder for musicians to be able to sight read. And they may not be too excited about playing your music if that's the case. So uh, my advice is to you is to try to make things look very natural. Try to stick to the norm. So make things look very normal and easy to read. For example, this is not normally read. This is, wouldn't be very easy to read because of all these ties and crossbar ties and things. Whereas this is actually in 4-4. So if you go and you delete all of these old time signatures I put in here, you'll end up with um, a piece of music that is quite easy to read and that is not because just like I said earlier when you make all the funny changes to key signatures time signatures sorry when you try to revert back this is what you get this kind of stuff and while this is still you know quarter notes and eighth notes like this is a quarter note right but it's not written that way it makes it look makes it very difficult to read okay moral of the story is have a backup so you can always revert back um, at certain points through your editing. Okay, there you go. Muse score two, uh, clefs, and time signatures. I hope you enjoy. 
Uh, be sure to connect with me in the, Disc the uh, Discord for Utopian IO, and also you can leave a message for me on the chats here. Uh, the comments, I'd be happy to get back to you and hear about your music. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.